What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A 220 1002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about logical security concepts pertaining to safeguarding and protecting information systems and data. Let's talk about Active Directory. So Active Directory is a directory service developed by Microsoft for Windows domain networks. It is included in most Windows server operating systems as a set of processes and services. Initially, Active Directory was only in charge of centralized domain management, but later it became an umbrella title for a broad range of directory based identity related services that can determine what people can see and do within a domain network and the basics of active directory are as follows you have this thing called login script and this is a series of instructions that a workstation follows every time a user logs onto a network and some of these instructions are virus updates drive mapping and printer assignments next you have the domain and this is a logical grouping of computers the computers in the domain can share physical proximity on a small LAN, or they can be located in different parts of the world then you have group policy and this is a feature that controls the working environment of user and computer accounts group policy object or gpo provides centralized management and configuration of operating systems applications and user settings in an active directory environment next you have what is called an organizational unit or an ou an ou provides a way of classifying objects located in directories or names and digital certificate hierarchies typically used either to differentiate between objects with the same name or to parcel out authority to create and manage objects. An example could be the HR department may be assigned to an OU with certain privileges and the IT department may be assigned to a different OU with a different set of privileges. Next, we have what is called the home folder, and this is also known as the home directory. And this is a user's private folder for storing personal files locally, but they can be accessed by a network admin as well. And then we have the folder redirection. So when computing specifically in the context of Microsoft Windows operating systems, Microsoft refers to folder redirection when automatically rerouting input and output to and from standard folders of directories to use storage elsewhere on a network. It allows for the work done by an OU to be saved on a common folder in the domain as directed by the administrator instead of the user. Next, we have what is called a software token, and a software token is a piece of a two-factor authentication security device that may be used to authorize the use of computer services. Software tokens are stored on a general purpose electronic device, such as a desktop, laptop, PDA, or mobile phone, and can be duplicated. Because software tokens are something one does not physically possess, unlike a hardware token, they are exposed to unique threats based on on duplication of the underlying cryptographic material, such as computer viruses and software attacks. An example of a software token is the Google Authenticator app that is downloaded to a device, which provides a shared secret key, which must be utilized in conjunction with the username and password to gain access to a system. Next, we have MDM policy, so mobile device management. This is an industry term for the administration of mobile devices such as smartphones, tablet computers, and laptops. MDM is usually implemented with the use of a third-party product that has management features for particular vendors of mobile devices. These products push updates and allow an administrator to configure many mobile devices from a central location. Next, we have port security. So port security helps secure the network by preventing unknown devices from forwarding TCP or UDP packets and turning off unused ports on devices such as firewalls or switches will make it harder for hackers to gain access to a machine. 
Now, as you can see in the diagram here, we have what is represented as a switch, and this is a router. And these are obviously two computers right here. You got these two computers hanging off of this switch. So just imagine that there are other ports on here that are not being used in port security. We will go ahead and disable the remaining ports on here so that nobody could come up and plug another Cat5 cable into the switch or try to get access to the switch by way of that port by some other means. So that would be an example of port security. Next, we have MAC address filtering. So media access control filtering refers to a security access control method whereby the MAC address assigned to each network card is used to determine access to the network. MAC addresses are uniquely assigned to each card. So using MAC filtering on a network permits and denies network access to specific devices through the use of blacklists and whitelists. While MAC filtering does give a network some additional protection, it can be circumvented by using a packet analyzer to find a valid MAC address and then using MAC spoofing software to access the network using the MAC address because MAC addresses are not encrypted. If a network adapter is already installed, you could just simply type in the command IP config forward slash all on a Windows device and that command prompt will display the MAC address. Certificate. So a digital certificate is a unique digitally signed document which authoritatively identifies the identity of an individual or organization. Using public key cryptography, its authenticity can be verified to ensure that the software or website you are using is legitimate. On the internet, a certificate is signed by a trusted CA or a certificate of authority and verified by the authority's public key. The decrypted certificate contains a verified public key of the certificate folder, which identifies the website operator with which encrypted HTTPS communications can be established. When trying to install an app from an unknown website, most operating systems will present a warning message informing you that the site does not have a verified digital certificate and then to proceed with caution or the operating system may just block the installation of the app altogether. In Windows 10, the certificate manager keeps track and checks certificates. To access the certificate manager in Windows 10, just click the start button, type certmgr.msc in the search field, and then press enter. Let's talk about antivirus and anti-malware. So antivirus, anti-malware is a computer program used to prevent, detect, and remove malware. Antivirus software was originally developed to detect and remove computer viruses, hence the name. However, with the proliferation of other kinds of malware, antivirus software started to provide protection from other computer threats. In particular, modern antivirus software can protect users from ransomware, keylog, root kits, Trojan horses, worms, adware, spyware, browser hijackers, etc. And some of the leading antivirus, anti-malware software vendors are companies like McAfee, Norton, and Trend. And then you have Trend Micro, which provides protections for mobile operating systems such as iOS. Let's talk about a firewall real quick. So a firewall is a network security system that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing traffic based on predetermined security rules. A firewall typically establishes a barrier between a trusted internal network and an untrusted external network, such as the internet. Firewalls can be either software or hardware. Firewalls are frequently incorporated into wireless routers, Microsoft Windows, and Mac operating systems. And software firewalls are also known as host firewalls. User authentication and strong passwords. So user authentication is a process that allows a device to verify the identity of someone who connects to a network resource. Authenticating users means making sure those who are logging in are truly who they say they are. One way to prove a user is who they say they are is to require the implementation of strong passwords to make access to a system more secure. The characteristics of strong passwords are as follows. You want to have a password that's at least least eight characters long, a variety of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols, and do not include real names or words in your password. Multi-factor authentication. 
This is an electronic authentication method in which a computer user is granted access to a website or application only after successfully presenting two or more pieces of evidence, also known as factors, to an authentication mechanism such as knowledge. This means this is something only the user knows, such as the username and password or possession. This is something that only the user has, which means you have your smart card or inheritance. This is something only the user is like your fingerprints, which are unique in the entire world. Also, multi-factor authentication protects the user from an unknown person trying to access their data, such as personal ID details or financial assets. Directory permissions. So most file systems have methods to assign permissions or access rights to specific users and groups of users. These permissions control the ability of the users to view, change, navigate, and execute the contents of the file system. In some cases, menu options or functions may be available or hidden depending on a user's permission level. This kind of user interface is referred to as permission driven. In Windows, the directory term is referred to as file and folder permissions. In Windows, file and folder permissions on the security tab of the file folder property sheet includes the following. It will display full control, modify, read and execute, list folder contents where this only applies to folder folders, then read and write. In Linux and Mac, directory permissions are as follows. You have the read permission. This opens files but makes no changes. You have the write permission. This is the ability to read and change files. And then you have the execute permission. This runs executable files or opens directories. In Linux, the shmod or the chmod command is used to change directory permissions. The get info menu sharing and permission submenu in the Mac operating system that is used to change directory permissions. A virtual private network extends a private network across a public network and enables users to send and receive data across shared or public networks as if their computing device were directly connected to the private network. A VPN connection requires a VPN server at the remote site and a VPN client at the client site. VPN traffic between client and server is encrypted and encapsulated into packets suitable for transmission over the network. VPN connections are often referred to as tunnels and the process of setting up a VPN is known as tunneling. Data loss prevention software detects potential data breaches and data exfiltration transmissions from things such as email, instant messages, etc., and prevents them by monitoring, detecting, and blocking sensitive data while in use, which is known as endpoint actions. It monitors and detects and blocks while it's in motion. That's known as network traffic, and it does the same thing with the data at rest, and this is known as data storage. Access control list. This is a list of permissions associated with system resources. An access control list specifies which user or system processes are granted access to objects, as well as what operations are allowed on given objects. You got the smart card, and this is a physical electronic authorization device used to control access to a resource. It is typically a plastic credit card size card with an embedded integrated circuit chip. Many smart cards contain a pattern of metal contacts to electrically connect to the internal chip. Others are contactless, known as proximity cards, and some are both. Smart cards can provide personal identification, authentication, data storage, and application processing. Smart cards may provide strong security authentication for single sign-on within organizations. To further enhance security, smart card security systems can also be multi-factor, requiring the user to input a PIN or security password, as well as provide the smart card at secured checkpoints. Next, we have email filtering, and this is the processing of email to organize it to specific criteria. The term can apply to the intervention of human intelligence, but most often refers to the automatic processing of messages at an SMTP server, possibly applying anti-spam techniques and the blocking of potentially dangerous messages. Filtering can be applied to incoming emails as well as outgoing emails. Email filtering can be performed at the point of entry to a network or by enabling spam and threat detection features built into email clients or security software. 
trusted and untrusted software sources. So trusted software sources are software providers that have been vetted and approved by an operating system and awarded digital certificates to prove their authenticity. Untrusted software sources are the complete opposite and the installation of the untrusted software could possibly be blocked by certain operating systems. And then finally, we have the principle of least privilege. So the principle of least privilege requires that in a particular abstraction layer of a computing environment, every module, such as a process, a user or a program, depending on the subject, must be able to access only the information and resources that are necessary for a legit purpose. So in layman's terms, the principle means giving a user account or process only those privileges which are essential essential to perform its intended job or function. So for example, a user account for the sole purpose of creating backups does not need to install software. Hence, it has rights only to run backups and backup related applications. Any other privileges such as installing software are blocked. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into some of this outstanding check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, a type of hierarchical database structure used in Windows Server environments that enables centralized management of devices and resources on the network is known as what? Is it a home group? Is it Active Directory? Is it work group? Or is it Windows domain? So which is a hierarchical database structure used in Windows server environments to enable centralized management of devices and resources? The correct answer is uh, Active Directory. Next question. Which of the following is an example of a soft token? Is it a USB token, an authenticator app, a smart card, or a key fob? So which is an example of a soft token? The correct answer is an authenticator app like Google Authenticator app. And the final question. Which type of software enables a centralized administration of mobile devices? Is it MFA, MMC, MDM, or MFD? So which one of these controls mobile devices? The correct answer is MDM or mobile device management. All right. So in summary, we have talked about logical security concepts to help protect information systems and data. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 220 1002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.